Welcome to the Simplified Marketing Podcast. Straight talking ideas to grow your business. Hello and welcome to the Simplified Marketing Podcast, the show that aims to help you grow your business. My name's John Lawley and I run an online web agency. Now, uh, we're continuing um, to produce and record episodes even throughout lockdown. So if you'd like to be involved, I think you have a great story, then please do contact us at hello at marketingsimplified.co.uk. You can watch all the episodes online at marketingsimplified.co.uk. But of course, please do subscribe to the show on iTunes and leave us a review. Tell us how you're doing. Um, Tell us what you thought of the show and if there's anything you'd like to hear um, or or people you'd like us to interview even on the show, um, that would be great as well. And we can um, then update um, and get some great episodes out ready for you. Now, I hope that you are all staying safe and well in the lockdown situation. It's very difficult for businesses out there at the moment, which is why we're trying to give you as much insights into what's actually working, what people are doing, and how people are having successes despite all the difficulties. So stay tuned. Um, this, today's episode is a roundtable event where me, Georgia, and Andrew are discussing what we found to be working with various different people that we're in touch with. Um, remember that the number one thing that we're finding out there at the moment is that people just aren't communicating with their customers and client lists. Um, just telling them what they're doing and what services they're offering and how they're operating during these difficult times. A, a, a simple Facebook message, um, an email marketing newsletter would be brilliant as well if you've got that client list, although it's very easy to put together, um, or even just getting on the phone. You've been hearing different people have just been getting on the phone, going through their address contact lists, calling up everyone they've ever done business with, just to, a chat, just to say hello. It's not necessary to sell. It's there to keep in touch. Communication is always the best. So here is the episode with me, Georgia, and Andrew. Okay, well, well, how do we feel? Because we're now about three or four weeks into um, the the lockdown or crisis, as you, as you can put it. You know, business has slowed down. People are starting to worry. I know that right at the beginning, a lot of companies um, that I've been talking to decided just to furlough staff straight away and just cut all their bills as soon as possible and, and almost panic in a way. But was that actually such a good idea to, to do that so quickly? It's one of those things, I think, because people didn't want to lose the choice or lose the decision of having that. Um, and because there was that, it wasn't necessarily clear on the company director situation. So it could always be a company director that was available within the business to carry on um, if they'd furloughed part or all of the staff. Um, but you're right. A lot of people made those quick decisions, felt like they had to. And I don't think they're wrong for that, but it's certainly changed and developed over the last few weeks. And certain companies I've spoken to are busier than they thought they would be. Um, others are completely the workflows, you know, stopped entirely. Um, and 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 others actually, you've also got that balance of they don't want to be working. They actually don't want to be put at risk. They don't want to be out there. Um, so I don't know. I can't blame business owners for making that that decision quickly. I think. Um, if I was back in the position of having um, employees and a big team, I would have wanted to do the same, to be fair. I think some of it would have come down to the brand point as well. I mean, you've got a lot of people that have got strong opinions on certain people still being out working. And I think from some of the clients that I, I help um, manage and just from feedback they've been saying, just in terms of their business brand, they didn't want their staff out and about. They didn't want them being seen to be in spaces that could be seen as why, sh- why are you here? Why are you still working? Um, it just made more sense for them to not and to be seen as business owners that were showing more care and caution for their staff members than taking on work that they is a bit hit and miss if they should or not. That, that was the feedback I was getting. Yeah, that's a good point. It is a good point because you can't help it. It's so funny when you're out there. There's Mm -hmm. there's a part of you that feels like you're being judged and you are also judging other people. Is this essential travel? Are you a key worker? Should you really be here? Yeah. Um, So no, I totally get that from a it can be quite damaging almost for a business. Unless unless you're a jogger, of course, and then you can run in front of people as often as you want. So it would seem on the pavements. But I yeah, I I would completely agree. It seems that way, doesn't it? It's it's um people are being judged by their own behavior out in public. And so a business, business can, can have a lot of oh, bad assumptions cast on them. I thought um, joggers were immune because they can just simply outrun the virus. Is that? Is that <laughs> yeah, yeah, apparently so, yeah. 
yeah. just can't catch them as long as they keep as long as you keep moving you mm-hmm. can yeah. just dodge it yeah yeah, yeah. Never, yeah. never mind falling into their slipstream and breathing in whatever they've had. Carrying the, the, the virus further. Um, yeah, I've never seen so many people go for a walk. I've never seen, you know, <laughs> yeah. if this is the government's way of getting everybody out there doing 30 minutes a day, they're actually I'm doing I'm not going to lie. Day. I'm one of them. I've been doing my walking. There just, you go. Because I feel I can't get into the gym, obviously. And I'm sitting at a desk all day long. And I'm yeah, just you're losing my that, pants. that shoulder mass, actually. You know, it's all... Yeah. Yeah. That protein up for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, maybe this is the government's actually long term strategy of saving the NHS get everybody to do the exercise now and therefore reduce long term obesity and type 2 diabetes and coronary heart disease. Mm. What a stroke of genius! It's, well, <laughs> there's a lot of questionable theories to be honest about all of this, though, isn't there? There's so oh, many things you, going you've on. You've got to love a conspiracy theory of all this, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there is so do. many going on. I really on. do. And it's so compelling <laughs> and it's so well put together. You're like, well, maybe that's that is the case. Maybe it's the 5G. It you haven't be. been out there smashing up mobile phone masks, have you? I uh, just one a day. I thought that was, that was recommended <laughs> oh, <laughs> you you the walk, <laughs> Smash a 5G tower up and um, but make sure you cover your face when you do it and um <laughs> And don't get too close to anyone else. <laughs> well, the closer you get to the 5G masks, the stronger the virus is as well. So you've got to be really careful. Oh, yeah, you do. Yeah, make sure you've got that PPE yeah, on. 10, 10 metre distance between everybody. Yeah, Put that exactly, mask on. Yeah. The radiation will get you too much. So, I mean, but that is, that's been more of a serious question, though, isn't it? Because if you think about how everyone is going to actually emerge from their homes in however long it's going to be in a few months' time, um, are we going to have a certain section of people who are lean, fit, and hungry to do more, and a lot of people who've turned into a lot of really bad habits? I think both. I think, you know, the the issue you've got, whether you're starting new habits or new behaviours, if people are getting into exercise more and more and are cooking more, great. There's there's many positives that will come from this, but there will certainly be a lot more people um, drinking in the middle of the day, (laughs) for sure. (laughs) That's that's likely to happen, I would have thought. But the other thing we'll be interested in is, is if we've been locked down and stuck in with ourselves for a period of time, when we are allowed to go back out there, is it a case of we all rush out or are we still very much like we're in queues next to people and it's like, whoa, whoa, hold on. I'm still, not, okay, if it's not two metres, maybe half a metre, but certainly not right next to me, please. I um, think that would be interesting. definitely going to be the case. No one, once lockdown is lifted or once things have, you know, got to a place where we can get some kind of normality back that's like society allowing it right but us as individuals is a completely different thing people that are still feeling ill from other underlying things that they may have are still going to be so cautious like another six months another eight months after because they know that they're not fully fit their immune system could go any way right now they're gonna not be going out as much right or like you said not standing too close to people um, it's still going to be a bit of a strange world, I think, for quite a while. Um, yeah, I definitely think so, yeah. Yeah, it could definitely go on, couldn't it? Because there could be resurgences, et cetera. So you're talking about could you adapt to a world where social distancing or some form of social distancing has to be part of a daily routine? Mm. I, I, because this is sort of, I mean, I wouldn't say it's the first time it's happened, obviously, in our lifetimes. Um you just you just don't know but it just shows you how fragile we all are and how mm. fragile everything is so taking extra precautions as a general an improvement in people's hygiene i, I think those steps are going to last I, I do what I, I don't think will last unfortunately is you know we've stopped going out we've stopped using the cars there's pollution in cities that have cleared carbon reduction across the world has come down the world is showing signs of improvement 100% we will just go straight back out there and ruin it. Yeah. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. That, that's what did we learn from this experience? Nothing. Yeah. I, we I'll, I'm happy to, as, as grim as that is, and you know I'm a positive person, um, but you just can't stop stupidity and short sightedness. And uh, even if we do continue with social distancing and better hygiene for argument's sake and more people exercising and cooking and so on. Yeah, in terms of, and I, I, I lean towards capitalism versus communism, but at the accelerated growth that we have with it, it's just going to implode on itself. And even though we've been given this warning and this respite, it's not going to make a blind bit of difference. 
I'm almost certain on that. It's going to be like a world of extremes, isn't it? Where you're saying about the people that um, are going to take hygiene more seriously and maybe be a little bit sceptical to go back out into the world, et cetera, and being a bit more safe. And you're going to get those people that feel that they've been imprisoned for the last God knows how many yeah. months, right? And then as soon as we get that freedom lifted again and we can go out, like you said, doing stupid things and, and being crazy, it's going to be a world of extremes because we've, we've not been allowed balance for so long. So that's going to be a really interesting one, I think, for all of us. To- There'll be some interesting... Definitely some interesting free economics statistics that are going to come out of this. Because if you think about, you know, if you if you look at, I, I'm sorry for this, sorry stats nerds out there, but the um, the Office for National Statistics website, they've managed to catch up um, to the week, I think it was the 3rd of April, with things like deaths, births and marriages. And apparently the background amount of deaths in the United Kingdom has risen by about 6,000 people during that last week. So you can only imagine what it will be, the background rate will have been the next few weeks once they've mm-hmm. caught up. But that's not including things like a drop in, you know, deaths on the roads from motorcycle accidents, things like that. Not, and, you know, from um, just just from background deaths, there's, there's going to be a lot of things which won't be out there. As, the, you know, sexually transmitted diseases, for example, will that have drastically reduced um, while we've been out? Things like, you know, we've now been in isolation for three weeks. So the kids can't have brought any different germs home from school. So, you know, the common cold and things like that, um, you know, normal flu, for yeah. example, hasn't managed to spread and things. So are we losing some immunity to the new different bugs that are out there, which we'd normally have? So naturally, everyone comes out of lockdown, you all get a cold really quickly. Um, and but businesses like airlines who are asking for bailouts within like two weeks of not being able to, uh, to you know, to function, basically. There's not a lot of resilience with certain industries out there. Not at all. I, I think... And, and this is where the whole sort of business model for, well, m- most industries seemingly, it's, they're always almost living invoice to invoice, month to month. You know, there, there's not a lot of companies out there apart from the mega ones like, you know, Apple and Amazon and Microsoft, et cetera, that can stockpile cash or religion that seem to have loads of properties and have money you know, tied up in that. Um, but most businesses, and as you say, specifically, including the airlines, I mean, even um, Stelios, EasyJet came out and said, we'll probably last to the summer. You know, um, I've had emails from them asking if you want to reschedule flights, but no sign of any refunds. I don't think they could afford to. Yeah. Um, at that point, yeah, they'd be going with their hands out. So, yeah, it's. It, I think from a, from a business perspective, hopefully people are using this time to either structure slightly. It, it's that supply and demand thing. I suppose with airlines, it's, it's ridiculous that right now you could book a flight for 20 quid, you know, or nine pound or 30 quid. You can go anywhere in Europe for 49 quid when the ban's lifted, obviously. That's nonsense. You know, how can that possibly be accurate? What are the profit margins on that? But because the demand is there and because somebody else will come and do it and somehow be able to supply that service, everyone's working for such small margins. You argue, arguably, you'd say it's, it's not a great business model, although we all need it. I suppose yeah. when it turned, when luxury became travel, it went from being a luxury to an everyday occurrence for every person out there. Um, it just got done on price. So no one cared about quality anymore. You know, you, you, they were talking about even doing Ryanair flights where you stood up. <laughs> they were going to take the seats out. So wasn't that that was just some of his? Flight. That was his random PR stunt, though, wasn't it? That you would never, <laughs> never fast and safe. Could well have been, mate. Could well, have, could well have been. I, but I saw it and I thought, yeah, I thought, yeah, probably. Why not? If it's an hour flight or two hour flight, and it cost you a tenner versus you know twenty quid, you would. Yeah. Well, wouldn't you? Yeah, it's simple, I suppose, and things like that. I mean, one of the things I found quite interesting is um, for the first couple of weeks. Anyway, um, you had all the food delivery companies and a lot of the supermarkets having trouble um, getting, you know, getting different slots out and managing to cope with as many customers as they had. They're just in time supply chains where it meant that if you bought, you know, one extra loo roll and everyone did that, that means that your shelves are stripped bare really quite quickly. They're going to have to start rethinking things like that. Um, but you've then you've also then all of a sudden looking at local suppliers. So this is a random thing, but you know, back up in the north. When I was being brought up, we always had milk delivered in a glass bottle on your doorstep. And that was the norm. You just asked him, you know, how many bottles you wanted every morning. And it just appeared magically and you paid him at the end of the week in cash. Um, but now you think now we're getting milk bottles delivered from the local farm 
um, and he's also delivering bread, um, butter, eggs, and um, and orange juice as well. Um, I only found out about this through the kind of local community things like that. So you've got people like that who are actually, you know, springing up from nowhere almost, or have always been there, but no one's ever known about them. Are there loads of orange trees then at the farm in Barnet? Must, must be, you know, <laughs> where he's getting his orange tree from, I don't know. It's orangery <laughs> in Barnet. <laughs> It's like with every cloud, there's a silver lining, right? And I guess for companies like the, the farms, the local farms and the, the local food delivery companies that have been battling against the big boys for years and years, and now the big boys have had to slow down, step aside, close, it's, it's given a platform to these smaller businesses to be able to break through the noise and and people can realise that there is a need for them and hopefully then a change in the economy right in some ways when when this is all finished there'll be a big boost for the small companies as well that have been struggling for years and years because now they've finally found a way in and they're going to keep running with that hopefully and that's why it's so important for all businesses now just to remain as visible as possible right whatever you're doing um on your when you're marketing on your social um you know wherever whatever means you can right now i guess to make sure that that doesn't slip afterwards as well, keep the momentum running, give people what they need. That's a really good point. Yeah, I mean, that's, from speaking that's very, to people, that is quite funny. Yeah, it seems like a lot of people have just given up in certain respects or haven't even communicated to their client list at all, You know, mm-hmm. whether they're actually still in business, whether they're still working during this time, or if there's any service that they can offer people. Mm-hmm. Um, they've just kind of just gone quiet, just hope because it's normally been a reactive service and people have come in touch with them. They've never thought about, do you know what? We need to keep people informed. This is what we can do. These are the social distancing methods we can do. And we can still work for you. I mean, gardeners, you would have thought this is prime season for gardeners out and about. I've not heard from any local gardeners at all. Out there. As you say, mate, I think it is, you know, the, the initial kind of the emotional shock of it all. And it was kind of being being part, either having a mentor, having a coach or being part of a networking group or a group of trades or however it is you kind of you know, find your business and share stories with. A lot of people were just sort of waiting. Nobody was sort of taking any initiative or didn't have the realisation because you're still just in shock of it all. Mm-hmm. What an interesting statistic might be is how many new Instagram accounts have opened this week. Because yeah. I know just from speaking to the tradespeople, people that almost fear using social media, all of a sudden I'm getting requests from from people that I've been trying to encourage to engage with their their audience a little bit. Mm-hmm. So that would be an interesting one. But a, a great point that you mentioned there, Georgia, is yeah, don't do it for the next three weeks. Like just just keep going. And a point that I made on one of the power team meetings that we had was, well, what products can you kind of get out there or what services can you do? Like you said there, John, what, what kind of works in terms of social, me- um, social distancing? So sure, gardeners, no issue, no problem. Um, or even with electricians, outdoor lighting, security lighting. Um, are there other properties that are, that are empty that need work to be done? I think the, the biggest issue, apart from the emergency works, is most people are holding on to their money just simply because they don't know what's going to happen. They don't know what's around the corner. They don't know how we're going to end up all paying back this money that, that we're getting. Is it going to be the VAT is going to go up or your tax is going to go up by half a percent or one percent next year? Are the interest rates going to go up and so on and so forth? It has to come back at some point over the next five years, no doubt. Um, so with that uncertainty, because nobody's been told that this is what's going on, people just aren't doing the non-essential work, the, um, the works that they can try and do themselves. I mean, a good one speaking to a couple of builders and handymen is obviously all the husbands are at home now finally getting a chance to work around the house. Okay, but it's a great opportunity for the handymen and builders because they're going to have to go and put it all right in the next three months. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> totally. Absolutely. Oh, man. But there is a flip side to that as well because even though, yeah, people are concerned and, and maybe not spending money, there are still a lot of people that are still earning a lot of money that are working from home and are still earning the wage that they were before where some people, their business is booming because of this. We spoke, like you said earlier, about the IT companies, the telecoms companies, some of my colleagues that are just inundated right now um, and they're, they're making more money than they ever have and they still are wanting things like their gardens and their security done so there are that we do forget that because we we put our emotional mindset and how we're currently feeling on the table for everybody and that's not always the way we need to remember that everyone has a different circumstance um, and there is still work to be had and opportunities to be created 
even if they can't be fulfilled right now, in a few weeks, fingers crossed, in a few months, um, people are ready and people are ready to spend on a lot of digital stuff as well. I know I'm really busy. I know John's still working as well. Like people like us, this is kind of the norm. We live in little isolated boxes with our computer screens, right? We're still functioning. Um, it actually looks all right from where you're calling from, Georgia. It looks uh, very pleasant. I, you know, I just, I just needed, I just needed some space, like <laughs> <laughs> needed some fresh air. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from the coaching side of the business, there's a, I've got a few clients that are doing emergency stuff. Are oh, busy, and they've yeah. already furloughed some of their staff, and they're having to sort of subcontract to to guys that are out and about and still willing to to take all the necessary measures and wear the correct PP, but get out there and solve the problem. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've got clients that are in the beginning stage of starting with me or in the process in the pipeline. And they're like, again, just no, not, not quite yet. I'm not ready yet. That uncertainty is coming in the other side of the business myself. I'm able to, as a you know qualified gas engineer, still get out there and react. Um, and where the employed engineers aren't working, it's, it's been a great opportunity for me to, to go out there and continue to, to build both sides of the business. So um, I'm, I'm grateful for the no traffic in London situation, really grateful for that, and no congestion charge at the moment. Um, so as you say, there are plenty of you know small things to be positive about and small things to, to remember when we're doing this. Um, but also just being hyper aware and hyper conscious that, for every person that's kind of doing all right, I know, I know a couple of the trades guys are really struggling and they're filling their time by doing, um, you know, even ambulance driving or, or passenger transportation and things like that. Really great guys. And you're like, oh, just what, what can we do? How can we hustle? What can we create? Um, and that's why more than ever, you know, these touch points with, with you, you, your friends, your colleagues, your, your, your coaches, um, people at your BNI chapters or full networking chapters, wherever it might be, just having those extra touch points. Actually, I got a call today from um, a guy called Jeff, who hasn't been a BNI member for three or four years. And he just called me, he goes, mate, I'm going from my phone book. Um, you're at the top, I'm near the top, hey, um, how are you doing? Is everything all right? I'm like, oh, mate, that, you know, that's great. It's such a nice thing to do whilst everyone's got time. So I would certainly encourage those you know how you're feeling, as you said there, Georgia, you put your own sort of emotions on the, on the table, but you don't know how everyone's feeling. So now is the time to sort of pick up that phone, not a message, pick up the phone and yes. just see exactly how everyone's doing. I'll tell you one company that's doing all right <clears throat> is that, that small company called Zoom. I imagine Zoom are doing pretty well. Do you reckon? Do you reckon they're doing all right? <clears throat> Could be. Could be behind the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I did wonder. <laughs> Under the conspiracy theory. Yes, it's yeah. them. They did it all. Yeah, I completely agree. It's this personal relationships, isn't it, that we're going to build. And are we almost being dragged, kicking and screaming into the 21st century now? People are having to use social media, having to buy things online a lot more. People are having to, you know, book your shopping delivery online. It's kind of a case of a lot of people are now having to learn the technology. So does that stand people in better stead further down the line? I'm loving this because we spoke earlier, John, before Andrew came online. In that we're in, a, we work in a digital space, right? And uh, for people like you and I, we know that having video calls, um, for example, to have meetings with clients is a really time efficient way of doing things, right? But over the last few years, it's quite a struggle when you're speaking to clients that have never done this before, or you say the word video call uh, and they freak out, so you end up going to. Um, two sites often and, and sitting in traffic two hours to uh, Staples Corner, as uh, I mentioned the other day. Uh, but now we've all, everyone's been sort of forced into this now. It's going to be quite a game changer. And hopefully those people that were really sceptical before see their own benefits. And actually, if I don't have to drive 40 minutes there and then 40 minutes back, or even 20 minutes there and 20 minutes back, that's 40 minutes in the day that I've got to work on my business or to um, leave a bit earlier and maybe spend some time at home with the kids or do something that I really want, uh, my passion project, 40 minutes a day, let me work on my passion project. Like there's nothing more valuable in life than time. And I wonder if us all being forced into this technical space Hopefully, we're going to come out of this and we're going to all learn how to create time as well and, and benefit in that way from business and personal. Not everyone just always being on video call. Face-to-face is lovely and there is, there is certainly a place for that. But for certain things, maybe doing things a little bit more like this, you're touching base with people more frequently, right? Rather than long phone calls, long talks every few months, you can touch base with a, 
with a face-to-face Zoom meeting. It's a better way to build relationships than a phone call because you're seeing faces, you're seeing smiles, you're seeing Andrew's lovely head. You know, without those kind of things, <laughs> we wouldn't be building the relationships that we want, right? <laughs> Yes, you can actually, if you want to me to pose right now, you can use that as your screensaver. Yes, I'll <laughs> screenshot it immediately. <laughs> no, you want it to be animated so it's moving backwards and forwards. Oh, just going across the screen like that. <laughs> yeah. No, no, to be fair, I think that's, that's one of the biggest points. There's so much time wasted. Um, and as we're all becoming experts, as you say, at kind of setting this, this technology up, it has saved so much time. It has brought so many people together. This process has proved that most meetings can be done in this format. It's also proved that most people, most people can work from home or do an aspect of their job from home, saving the commute, saving carbon emissions, saving time. What it's forced us to do is not just create time, as you said. There he is. Look at that. Beautiful. (laughs) (laughs) You can learn skills like that, too. (laughs) What it's also done, um, who I speak to the other day, he said, most of the time when I go out to work, I'm awake and away before the kids get up for school. Yeah. When I come home, I'm kind of in a rush to get the kids into their routine and get them back to bed. He goes, I've been on my hour walk or bike ride every day with them. We're spending time together. We're in the garden together. I've never spent so much time with my family. So not only has the use of technology given us more time, it hopefully has also allowed us as humans to prioritize um, our, our goals and our strategies for achieving those goals. And what's more important, work or family. Um, so hopefully that will come out of it or everyone's going absolutely nuts and can't wait to get back to work. I don't well, know. there is, yes, there is the flip side to this of, yes, it is wonderful. And yes, mummy and daddy and whoever are always around <laughs> during an extended <laughs> period of time. But I don't think I've ever been so tired in my entire life. I was trying to do a job with the wife also working and looking after two small children. I mean, look, you know, it is what it is, isn't it? We just have to kind of battle through and get through it. And, you know, we could be in worse situations. Um, But yes, it has been a challenge, I think, for everyone. Um, Yeah, thinking creatively. For a little while, you know, and, and to be honest, there's a part of me that's like, if you're going to lift it a little bit, then okay. If people can actually follow follow the rules and regulation, but in some ways, the longer the better. Um, but let's not come out of this and not have learned anything. Um, but I think Georgia made the the a great point with the the meeting thing there. It's it's so simple to do. It's so easy to catch up in the time save just from the commute alone. I mean, how tiring is it just sitting in traffic for? Oh, it's, it's awful. It's soul destroying, I think, for a lot of people. And maybe, I, I don't know, if it was a forward thinking government about this, you'd start to think about how you restrict traffic, wouldn't you, to key workers? And maybe something will come out of this where delivery drivers, people at like the NHS, people who look after our food production are actually paid what their, what their value is, yeah. rather than, you know, just being treated as the lowest part of society and should just take, you know, what they get. Well, they're in the best possible position for change, given that Boris has said that the NHS saved his life. So if there is not some kind of change to how they're thought of, looked after and rewarded, then I'll be incredibly surprised and also disappointed at the same time. Yeah, come on, we need to finish on a positive note. What are we going to talk about? I'm sure he's really worried what I think. He goes, oh, God, that Andrew Black will be disappointed. I better better stick something in for the NHS. That's it, that's done now, yeah, sort it out. (laughs) Well, I can tell you one thing that sort of uh, brightened my day a little bit yesterday. Um, Obviously, for those that um, the people that are in BNI groups or networking groups that have all gone online, awesome, awesome. Um, I've I've had a number of messages from the chaps in my networking groups that are really concerned about their hair because they're obviously unable to have haircuts. So as the the weeks are going on and we're having the video calls, the hair is getting sort of more and more wild and a bit longer. And I'm a little bit excited, I'm not going to lie, to see where we stand with these chaps' hairs (laughs) in like three months. Andrew, obviously you you shave your head. Well, I mean, obviously this is this is a choice. Obviously, first and foremost, let's, let's put it out there. And um, I'm very grateful that um, for once that I've got this hairstyle because <laughs> no issues, no dangers. <laughs> and John, tell us about your situation with your hair. Uh, I'm very close. Do you cut it, or are you are you good to just grow it out? I'm very very close to having to do that divorce impending haircut. <laughs> so. 
every morning I wake up and just thought, yeah, I'll just leave it. No, and, uh, you know, don't have to impress anyone on Zoom or anything like this. No, I'm, I'm running out faster and out of gel. This is going to be, this oh, is a minute. No. I like it. For us girlies, it's great because we can just let it grow. We can tie it up. All looks fabulous. For, for the, our, our bald friends, like Andrew, who just gets rid of it all, like happy days. It's kind of the people in John's corner now, the, the, the chaps with the hair that yeah. don't do the shave thing. Virile. Don't shave yeah. it. Well, we're, we're finally going to get to see what um, John's real hair colour is as well, which I'm excited. <laughs> How rude. I'm, yeah, Philip Schofield, Silver Fox. Yeah, very good. But yeah, that, 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 that was something little light that um, I was getting lots of messages about this week. And I thought, do you know what? You need, we need to find these little nuggets to keep ourselves amused a little bit and keep, keep all the groups. We'll start you know, posting our spirits. before and after lockdown. Yeah, pictures, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so there you have it. Don't forget, if you've been enjoying the show and it's been interesting and you've found it useful, please do share um and write us a review on itunes and also share the content via facebook and instagram we'll see you next time that's all for this time but don't worry we'll be back with more soon stay tuned for new episodes at marketingsimplified.co.uk